I have many things to tell you, but you can't understand it now. However, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he didn't come yet, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak from himself, but whatsoever shall he speak, so shall he be told. And he will guide you, will inform you into all things that are to come, and he will glorify me. This is a human being. And the Greek word there is pneuma, spirit. The word pneuma, when we go back to the ancient Greek, because the Greek have two types of Greek, Coin Greek and the classical Greek. The Coin Greek is the common Greek, but in the classical Greek, the word pneuma means a spirit, something that hears something and give it out. Mm -hmm. So the only person that hears something is prophet. The Quran said, Wama yentiku hawa in huwa illa wa yuha. Muhammad does not speak from himself. Whatsoever shall he hear, so shall he was told. So Muhammad actually is the comforter here, is the spirit here. Today, if you go to Mecca, at the tomb of the Messenger of Islam, it says, La ilaha illallah, al malikul haqqum mubin, Muhammad Rasulullah, as sadukul wa'adul amin. This sadukul wa'adul amin is a spirited truth who is al amin, the trustworthy one. This title was given to him long before he was commissioned as a messenger of Allah. So he's the spirit of truth. And all what he said is truth. And he said, He will glorify me. And the only prophet that came after Muhammad and tell over 1.8 billion Muslims all over the world that Jesus Christ is the Messiah is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He didn't say Abu Bakr is the Messiah or Usman or Ali. He said, "Inna al Masih is Abu Maryam Rasulullah." Most certainly, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he is the Messenger of Allah, and he is the Messiah. So, really, Muhammad glorified Jesus because in the Quran we have a chapter dedicated for Jesus Christ and his disciple, Surah Al-Maidah. That chapter was where the food came from heaven and the disciple of Jesus ate with him. And then we have a surah again to glorify Jesus Christ, so to Ali Imran, to glorify his parents. It was a beautiful surah, talk about Jesus Christ, his mother, Elizabeth, and all the family. And then we have another surah in the Quran, chapter 19, so to Maryam, glorifying Jesus Christ's mother. He will glorify me. I am yet to see a single verse or a single chapter in any version of the Bible dedicated for Jesus Christ. But Muslim, we have a chapter dedicated to Jesus Christ. So now, is, it fair, is it fair to say, now, one, that according to, the, 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 according to Islam now, and according to the Bible, where persons are saying that Muhammad was not mentioned in the Bible, now, is it fair to say that I will raise, in Deuteronomy, it is said right. that I will raise up a prophet right. unto you, like from, your, from, from among your, your, your brethren. Absolutely. Is that prophet, Jesus, peace be upon him? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. A very beautiful question asked. Now, Deuteronomy 18.18 18 definitely talks about somebody, a prophet to come. But before we get to uh, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, in the book of John chapter 1 verse 19, the Jewish, they know in their Mishnah, Talmud and the Haggadash, they know that a prophet will come towards the end of time. So they came to John the Baptist. John chapter 1 verse 19. They asked John the Baptist, Yahya, said, John, are you the Messiah? And he said, I'm not the Messiah. And they asked him, if you are not the Messiah, Jesus, are you Elias? Elias. He said, I'm not, I'm not Elijah. I'm not Elijah. And they said, if you are not the Messiah, you are not Elijah. Who are you? Are you that prophet? Which prophet? Are you that, that prophet? That was yes, that out was spoken of that he's going to come by Moses. by Moses. If you're not the Messiah, mm -hmm. so if the Christian said this is referring to Jesus, no, because he asked him, Are you Messiah? Jesus? He said, No. Are you Elias? Elijah? He said, No. He said, If you are not the Elisha, if you are not uh, 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 the Messiah, then who are you? Are you that prophet? Now, if you have any Bible, in John chapter 1, verse 19, in the brackets, they have an index indicating that you should go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. It will explain who that prophet is. So now let's see Deuteronomy 18, 18. What did it say? It reads, God Almighty speaking to the prophet Moses. He said, Oh Moses, I, God Almighty, I will rise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. Similar. Similar to thee, like unto thee. Like unto thee. Similar to, to Moses. Similar to Moses. Mm -hmm like unto thee, and I will put my word in his mouth, and he will tell them all what I said. But anyone who does not believe what he said, 
I, God Almighty, I will take vengeance on him. And he, that prophet, will speak in my name. That prophet, he will speak in my name. Now, let's break it down. I will rise them up a prophet. Wallahi, the only prophet, if you ask any Muslim, who is Rasulullah? Who is the prophet? He said, Muhammad is the prophet. But the, the, the Quran also says, Jesus and Moses and Nehemiah, Isaiah, they are prophet. But that epithet is specific Muhammad. He's known by that epithet, a prophet of Islam. And he said, he will be like unto you. Now, if you analyze it, of course, Muhammad is more like unto Moses. Because the Christians say, Christ is God. He is son of God. So, Jesus Christ, Muhammad is no son of God. Muhammad is not God. Muhammad, you know, and Moses is not God. He's no son of God. So, Moses is more like Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Muhammad came into this world through the agency of man and woman. Mm -hmm. Moses through the agency of man and woman. But Christ is his only the spirit of Allah. It's the word of God that go into Mary and she conceived the immaculate concept. So Muhammad is more like unto Moses. Muhammad's prophet, when he came, the, the Arabs, the very first Arabs, they tried to kill Muhammad. So Muhammad ran away, he escaped from Mecca to Medina. Moses, they were trying to kill him in Egypt. He escaped from Egypt to Midian. But Christ spent all of his life in Jerusalem, in Judea. Muhammad came with a book, the Quran. The Arabs gave him endless proof, but towards the end of time, all the Arabs accepted the Quran and to the whole wide world. Jesus Christ, most of the same thing. He came with the Torah. They gave him endless problem, but towards the end, all the Israelites accept the Torah as the guide from God to them. But Jesus Christ came, and today, 99.9 .9 million Muslims did not accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. So Muhammad is more like unto Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses have children. Muhammad have children. Christ no children. Moses is married. Muhammad is married. Christ is not married. Moses was, you know, he died. He was buried in the ground. Muhammad died, buried in the ground. Christ went to the heaven. So like unto thee. And the confirmation goes on. And I will put my word in his mouth. Now if you open any, any, any Quran, Kul say, the first revelation that came Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Kul, the angel said, Kul, listen, Kul huwa Allahu Ahad. Muhammad said, Kul huwa Allahu Ahad. Allah huwa Samad. So the words were practically put in the mouth of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ikra. 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 Read, read in the name read. of the Lord. And Muhammad read. So he said, Ikra. Bismar Rabbika Lazi Khalaka. Whatever the angel said, he repeated. The verse said, he, and I will put my word in his mouth. And the verse also said, and he will speak in my name. Now, the only religion that you open our Quran, it begins in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. He will speak in my name. I read a book. Now. I read a book, uh, Sheikh. Now. Um, by Brother Ahmed, Sheikh Ahmed Yadat. Yes. And that book was telling me that, showing you where they had taken out the word Allah from the Bible. Yeah. Let's go for it. And they had put, replaced it with God. Now. And scholars of, of, of Christianity yes. had agreed that mm. the word Allah should be there. Absolutely. In, 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 in anything. No. But what I want to get to you and to the viewers, right. what caused this division? Because years ago, the Christians and the Muslims lived side by side no. and lived happily. Alhamdulillah. How, this, how this, this division really came about? It's very, very sad. The Quran mentioned this situation. The Quran said, the nearest the nearest to you O muslim the nearest to you in love are those who call themselves the christians this is because these are people that are not arrogant people who are humble and have renounced the world so the muslims actually and the christians are very close we are so very close that the messenger of islam said towards the in the day of judgment, Jesus Christ and Muhammad will rise up in the same place because he, Jesus Christ, left the message to Muhammad They are very close. So history bear witness to the fact that the Muslim and the Christian were actually going together. The pattern of the way came when the church and the separation of the religion came. And so, you know, uh, uh, politics and politicians use religion, Islam, and Christianity to gain ascendancy to gain position. And so they caused this conflict, the rift between the Muslims and the Christians. 
which is very, very sad. It shouldn't be like that. The Muslim and the Christian are very close. And, you know, the Muslim have been, you know, uh, or the, uh, the, the Christians really uh, enjoyed a very beautiful and comfortable, you know, environment at the time of the Islamic, you know, uh, 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 when Islam was all over the Middle East the and Ottoman Palestine, Empire. the Ottoman Empire. They, they were leaving part of Europe and coming on the Islamic you know, uh, rule because that's where they get freedom. They and get justice. freedom of justice and worship and everything. But it's very unfortunately that you know, this thing is happening. It is actually a politics, but we, have, we can bridge the gap, inshallah. But again, Islam in the light of the Bible. Now, Allah says in the Quran, now. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, He says, marry from among the Christian and the Jews, the upright ones. Now, today, if a Muslim brother wants to marry a Christian woman, it's a big hurrah. Yeah. That the two is, 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 is unholy, it's an unholy alliance, and, 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 and um, they call it the, the unholy alliance. Yeah. And they call it that um, good can mix with this, with the bad. You know, a lot of names they give it, and yeah. they try to deter it. Yeah. If it is said by God Almighty in the Quran, yeah. is there any place in the Bible that refutes that a Christian woman or a Jewish woman cannot marry a Muslim man? Well, actually in the Bible, especially like the Old Testament, when we have where most of the heavy laws are, the book of Leviticus, they have a lot of laws. The, what they meant when they said a Jew is not allowed to marry, you know, a non-Jew. Mm -hmm. A Jew is not allowed to marry a non-Jew. But when we come to the New Testament, Christ didn't make any statement. There's not a single statement from the lips of Jesus Christ that said, you know, uh, 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 a Christian or someone who followed Christ could not marry outside Christendom. It just say, marry someone who is a believer. Mm -hmm. And since the person is a believer, he believes in one God, he believes in Jesus Christ as the messenger of God. Christ never thought that he is God, he is the son of God, or any of this stuff like that. It was said about him. So a believer is someone who believes in Allah, God Almighty, which is his name. His name is not God. Mm -hmm. which, is, which I will explain eventually. But So Jesus Christ really didn't mention anything about don't marry Muslim. But in Islam, we are told that marrying the people of the Ahlul Kitab, the Jew and the Christian, is okay. You could marry them. The Jew and the Christian, you could eat their food. You could marry them. The verse is so clear in the Quran that there is no way to go around it. This is the law of Allah. You cannot bring your own, inter we cannot bring our own interpretation. So this is it's just too straight that we, the Muslims, are allowed to marry the people, the women of the other kitab. Yes, now. The, 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 there's another thing that, that worries a lot of, and a lot of my Christian friends out there, no. probably would, they would ask me a question also. Mm -hmm. They are saying that Islam, they, they, we follow Muhammad. Right. They follow Jesus. No. Could you explain to, to, the, to, to, the, to the viewers of the, the public, if we follow Muhammad, or do we follow the Quran, or we follow Allah, or do we praise no. Muhammad no. as they do, they praise Jesus, and no. they ask for things in Jesus' name? Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil um, You see, in Islam, we follow Muhammad because he is the prophet of today, that we have to follow his guidance that he brought. At the time of Jesus, those who follow him, they follow the right thing. His disciple and those who believe in him as a messenger of God, they followed him in as much that he said in the Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one go to the Father but through me, which I don't have any problem with. Because at the time of Jesus, he was the way, the truth, and the life. And no one go to the Father but through him. At the time of Moses, who was the way? Moses. Moses. So he was the way, the truth, and the life. And no one go to the Father but through Moses. At the time of Noah, Noah was the way, the truth, and the life. And no one but through Noah. But before Christ left, he said, If you love me, keep my command, and I will pray, and the Father will send you another comforter, and he will be with you forever. The Quran is here with us forever. In the Islam, we say, Hatim and Nabi in wa Imam al Mursalin. Really, we don't worship Muhammad, but we follow his guidance that he brought. And we follow and believe the guidance that was given to Jesus. But Christ never said for anyone to worship him or to pray in his name. What he said in the book of John, chapter 7, verse 21, he said, Not all those who call me Lord, Lord, will enter heaven, but those who do the will of God, they will enter heaven. And he said, On that day, which day? The day of judgment. Many will come to me saying to me, Lord, Lord, 
Did we not prophesy in your name? In your name we cast out devil. In your name we do so many mighty works. And Jesus Christ said, I don't know you. Get away from me. You who worship me for nothing. You who do iniquity. And then we have in the book of John, in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, chapter, chapter, Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. He said, these people, they worship me with their lips. But their heart is far away from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrine of men. Men who wrote the books. So all this thing was written after Christ. He have